defenestration exercise by the Canadian authorities had been a success in providing easy site access, but it also had another more scientific benefit, an overall assessment of battlefield war detritus still lying within the Canadian memorial site over 90 years after the conflict. The 100 square metre area had been swept over three months by a French team of demineurs to a depth of 18 centimetres. A huge amount of war detritus was uncovered, including scores of sharp metal man traps or calthrops. More worryingly, they also recovered 384 items of unexploded ordnance. A great deal more lay deeper down, but where this might be uncovered in the course of excavation, the Duran Group's own explosives experts were on hand to ensure it would be moved safely to a location for disposal by the demineurs. On the weekend of August the 1st, 2004, a small team of six began a preliminary excavation on the mooted ST-19 sap head to try and establish an entrance to the German system opposite La Folle P73G3. You can see that there's solid, solid clay. And we're hoping that this is our shaft. We've actually cut along the line of the trench. And the aim is that this will be our main safe access way into the shaft. Below 18 centimetres, the ground is thick with war detritus. One German pick head with an extensive metal sheath into the top of the helve. This is a German mess tin. It's been crushed, it's aluminium. Body for cooking and lid and a securing handle which holds lid to base and can also be used as a handle to use the uh, lid as a small pannikin. The aluminium has been rolled around steel wire. And Did every uh, soldier have one of these? Yes, this was a universal issue. Everybody, like a British mess tin, every uh, German soldier had a mess tin of this type. These are fragments from a gas mask canister. And here is a badly corroded but ad identifiable German respirator filter. Inside you can see the activated charcoal which uh, acted as the filter. Through the top there's a brace and some wire gauze which held the filter material down. The spare filters were carried in a tin can and here's one which hasn't been out of its can, still intact. They were often carried in a small canvas satchel. Again, the bottom surface there shows the gauze. This piece is from Field Engineering Works. It's a staple uh, of a type we found before, uh, which was hammered in to tie sleepers together to form uh, either decking or walls. A collection of typical shell splinters and a piece of British shell driving band as you can tell from the configuration of the where the grooves are spaced and there are the marks made by the rifling of the piece when it was fired and found a lot of empty cartridge cases uh, in this particular location some of which are French 8mm Lebel the rest of them are all German uh, small arms ammunition 7.92 millimeter rimless cases and the base of what appears to be a French uh, cooking canteen but these were made of tin plate and so they were uh, far more uh, liable to corrode. You can see a little tag on the back where a strap would go through it to fix it onto the owner's backpack. 